Hello and welcome back. We're just down here checking on the in calf cows here. Just giving a look at them. There's nothing. There's nothing that near calf and now or anything, but just giving a look around. Um, we done them there for the scour there yesterday as well. Just give them, give them a shot there to cover them. A sort of you have from I think it's twelve weeks before calving to uh, about three weeks before calving to give them a shot shot. That should cover them well enough. Um, they should fall within that. <coughs> um, there's some of them now due to their scanning. They probably will be calving in the next three weeks, so that should be them covered out then as well. And if they are a little tight for time, <coughs> it's usually the first calves is not too bad anyway. That's once you're in the middle of it to the latter end is when the pressure really comes on the scour. <coughs> That's when we find a bit of pressure comes anyway from the last half to the end of them anyway. That's where you start seeing your scour problems. But yeah, they're good, in good, good order enough probably. Some of them in a little too good of order but look at um, Don't like having them too too light either like you want to be hit. They want to be in good order enough I think when they're calving anyway to have to have a sup of milk and no don't they don't want to be over fat now or anything but but these lads here have a bucket out with them. It's Crystal X mineral bucket pre calver um the big tubs there ah, good value enough I think because that's good and hard it lasts them a good while um even the bull is having a go of it, the pre calver but sure. <laughs> That's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. But um, yeah, there's a good scatter stuff in it there, the usual minerals and that in it. So, we get him off Coney for long down there. Um, and then a Scarty. We get him off Coney for long there and get a few buckets there every year for the pre calving anyway. And we'd be working on the bag then once they're in the shed, but. Yeah, that's them there anyway, they're, they're contented enough, not a bother on them there, it's a bit milder now this morning, so they're not as edgy, has been cool enough there for the last couple of days, but it's very mild there now this morning, so maybe there might be a, a bit more growth in the back end, um, I suppose the longer, the longer they can stay out the better anyway. Um, Every week out now along at this time of the year means a lot, so it'll, it'll uh, help anyway, as long as it says fairly dry, sure. Yeah, so the longer they can stay out, sure, the better, and um, reduce reduce straw usage and everything, so. Okay, we'll go take a look at the rest of them here. Just tipping down along to the bulls here now with a scoop of meal for them there. You can see there we got that rye grass cut there. That was way ahead of weight there. We got a couple of days there, so it worked out not too bad. It dried off fairly well. I shook it out and we gathered it up back up and bailed it up and all and do any footage of it. There's more bales, much the same, but there's what 11 acres or, or 11 bales off of uh, just a shake over two acres. So it did fairly well there now for a month's growth. Um, I done very well for just a month. So you see there, it's even greening up fairly quick there. So <clears throat> it'll be a pick back on that again now. But go down to these lads here now. See them all there under the trees there now. Not a bother on them, just waiting. They just have it emptied out there now. Just watching them, making sure that three and a half. Or clean out the feeder. Now they're fairly fairly well I have here now. Move them on to the next bit there now tomorrow. Um, we'll just move them on to the next piece there tomorrow now and give them a fresh peek. Um, but yeah, we'll throw in this here now. Oh just open up this here now. Shove on there. bit there up in the middle. Not too bad to have a little bit left. 
but that's down in the feeder there now, as you can see. Um, just a little channels there where it just goes out. Um, just meters out fairly well now in the septa. Keeping back, of course. You see there now, they have it cleared out there fairly well, so. Yeah, we'll get this into it here now. Oh, they're up investigating now, any of not be too long about coming up to see what's in it, but that's that in there now. Um, it's about 350 kilos there and that. It's, um, it it hold approximately a ton when it's full there a meal, so there'll be a good way of going in it there, but the bucket holds 350 and you just bring down that much to them, it's just easier. When you're setting up, we'll have it set there now at a minute, so. As you can see, these lads working over here now. Getting it down with his tongue there out of the narrow piece and work away over foot. Yeah, these lads doing well here now. Um, they're looking fairly well there now. And they're quite a bunch of cattle enough, so be happy enough with them. But that's one thing about uh, the lick feeders, they spend an awful lot more time. They spend an awful lot more time around it, like, and they tear it up more, like, um, you'd want, you'd want a sort of a, an old bad corner or something that you could leave it into a rougher ground like that there, they used to be done from there, so. Of course, if you're in a new reseeder, that now I'd say, they would uh, do a lot of tearing on it now, whether you'd, keep moving or are you just moving the problem further on by moving it a bit but oh well but yeah we'll let them lads out there now tomorrow there's a fresh pick of grass on that there now again so it'll keep them ticking along there for another another week or so oh the pillars go out there and welded up there for the lower side of that shed um, drilled and all there and notched in there for the for the outside cleat, or the outside cleat is on there for the first timber as well, so notched into the top of the top of the pillar there. And um, the cleats on there for the side cheating as well. We're going to put uh, either space boarding or an adjustable door on the top five foot um, to lay air ventilation in. Um, uh, a door that you can angle in and lay in a breeze or shove it back a bit as you want it. Um, not sure which way we're going to go yet. Maybe, maybe the Yorkshire boarding or the space boarding, but sure, we'll see. We can sort that out after anyway. And I've started making up the the overhang there to go over the feeding passage. That's it there now. Um, That'll be reaching out head foot. Uh, the pillar will go here. Then that's the truss. Then we put the trusses together here. We're measuring there the width, the true width of the shed. So it's uh, 14.3 meters, um, 40, 47 foot six or thereabouts from the inside of the pillar to the inside of the pillar. And that's it there then. Just a couple of bolts there in the centre of it, <clears throat> and out to there. So yeah, that's it. We're getting fairly well along there now. Um, just them short, um, short overhangs to make there to, for the feeding passage. Have one done. Um, have them all cut the length there. 
just notch out that piece there at the bottom and get uh, a knee brace into it. That much done, get these sprayed. And we're pretty well, oh, I have to put a couple of diagonal braces in the, in a couple of spans there on the feeding passage side. So get a couple of cleats welded on there for them. Forgot about them when I had, but anyway, it's easy enough. It's easier to put them on now than take them off. Um, get them on, get painted. Painted then will be the next. That'll be the next thing there. Um, get these, they're all washed. The pillars have to be washed and these have to be washed and we get them all sprayed then and ready to go. But yeah, that's it for this time. Um, thanks to everyone who subscribed and if you haven't already done so, maybe hit the subscribe button and the like button. Uh, maybe the notification button there as well. And sure, see you in the next one. Good luck.